have more news for you. Yes, sir. And like the Americans say, I'm bringing it home. The former finance minister, Setepe, has questioned le the legacy Ghana is leaving following news that euro bond holders will forgo about $4.7 billion owed them by the government. He explained that to some extent, this debt forgiveness will ease a bit of the stress on the economy and facilitate the release of the subsequent IMF funds. However, Mr. Tekpe said that despite this upside, he had mixed feelings about debt forgiveness, noting, quote, what legacy are we living? As a country, HIPIC was total debt forgiveness mm -hmm. within two decades of default, and here we are being forgiven again. Is this a legacy that we want for Ghana? I say this with some regret and confidence in the fact that this was envisaged when we discovered oil. He disclosed that the NDC government had anticipated the possibility of a debt default and the possibility that without certain measures in place, Ghana would continue sleeping. As such, the government had put in place measures to prevent, but things have not gone as planned. Quote, so when we discovered oil, there was a one and a half year debate as to what to do with oil. And we pledged both sides. One, we said, we, uh, we said never should we allow cocoa and gold prices to go up. Then we're happy go down, then it's all tears. Stabilization fund. We said if the stabilization fund is going high, we, sh we could cap it. Use it for two purposes. Contingency fund. Mm -hmm. Then you come to the sinking fund. That's for debt repayment. Because you can't just keep borrowing. We, the NDC government, had used approximately $350 million to take off President Kufo's first bond. And then we left $250 million and $200 million was used by the current government to pay off the balance. And we did a debt restructuring backed by the World Bank Guaranteed Bond, which is now impaired. This comes after the government has reached an agreement in principle with two bondholder groups to restructure around $13 billion of this um, um, debt. And they give us uh, some, some uh, details of that. Apparently, there are two. There's a PAR and there's a DISCO. And so you have the option of choosing which one. I'm sure that those technical details will be, will be, will be, will be dealt with. Now, banking consultant Dr. Richmond Etuini has warned the government against completing the external debt restructuring agreement with its official creditors, reviewing whether the deal is a severe for the city. He said the country is treading on a risky path where to continue to rely on foreign funds, leading to more borrowing in subsequent years. He was contributing to Joy Prime's morning show on Tuesday with Rosalind Feli, following Finance Minister Dr. Amin Adam's announcement. He says, let me make it categorically clear to Ghanaians that the trajectory we are going, we are treading on dangerous paths like Argentina and Greece. Mm. And we don't want to go there because every four years we would have to go and restructure the debt because you haven't put in, you haven't put in anything that will be able to pay the cash flows. Mm. In a related development, Kenneth Kwamina Thompson, CEO of Dalex Finance, warns that Ghanaians should brace themselves for tough economic times over the next decade. Thompson expressed skepticism about the effectiveness of debt forgiveness, suggesting it merely postpones Ghana's economic challenges rather than resolving them. Quote, I have been speaking about the Ghanaian economy since 2014, and I can assure you, as night follows day, that this $300 million from the IMF is merely covering the cracks. Nothing will change. Uh, it says, as Ghanaians, we need to start preparing for a rough next 10 years. We talk about savings, but when has the government ever met its revenue targets? And do you think international creditors are so naive that they won't take the money if it's available? Why would they give us a free pass? These are commercial creditors. He remains unconvinced that the situation will improve for Ghanaians. There is um, nothing that will make me even consider for 1% that anything is going to change. The situation with the local currency is not going to change. All that's going to happen is that soon as the money comes in, the currency will stabilize temporarily. He predicts that after the December elections, the Ghanaian city will once again decline sharply against major international currencies. Quote, if we couldn't solve our problems with over $10 billion in six years, how are we going to solve them with $3 billion? Let's be real. I've heard economists talk endlessly, and after the fact, they come and explain what happened. I can assure you that's what will happen again. When has the government ever met its revenue targets? That's, that's where, what you plan on paper, and then the reality. He emphasized that Ghanaians should prepare for the West as the coming years will be very challenging. Let's acknowledge that the next 10 years will be very rough. The government will have very little money to work with. And we are also cut off from international capital markets. He's advised government to find ways to cut expenditure and increase income. Yeah, that's very busy. <laughs> you know, when I watch television, mm -hmm. Listen to radio and read the newspapers.
I'm always shocked. Why? Because of what our leaders celebrate. Okay. What are they celebrating? You are so indebted. You can't pay your loans. You've reached a state of bankruptcy and so on. Your creditors meet and say, look, we have to get at least some of what we gave you back. And for that matter, we are restructuring the debt. Okay? We are giving you a small percentage. You take that for free and so on. We are changing the, the rate of interest on some of the debts so that we can get something back. And our leaders surprisingly are celebrating this <laughs> as a mark of confidence in the Ghanaian economy. Madness! Complete madness! You listen to communicators from your party and they say this is a mark of confidence in the Ghanaian economy. How is this a mark of confidence in the Ghanaian economy? How? That we agree that you are so broke you can't pay your debts? And it's a mark of confidence in the economy. And they are saying that the economy will rebound. Rebound from where? Mm -hmm. Rebound that, to be able to pay the deferred payments. That's depends, all. Depends on what you do. Mm -hmm. That's all. But even if it will rebound, huh, it will rebound only to the extent that you are able to pay your creditors. But even the relief. But even that one, mm -hmm. I doubt. Mm -hmm. Because the trajectory we are on, does not lead to resource accumulation Thank you. even for That's the purpose of paying debt. Exactly. That's what I want to say. So as for development, forget it. You understand? And our leaders are celebrating this. The president says that it will um, um, pave the way for the resumption of all stored projects. Hmm. As for president, you, know. you can forgive him. Why? Because this president has been honest with us. How? Oh, absolutely honest with us, Scott Grandi. And this is the president who came and told us that he cannot manage the economy. When did he say that? When he was contesting for elections in 2016. The reason why he brought Dr. Baumia Oh, okay, okay. I now yeah, understand you. Was that he needed somebody who could manage the economy. Okay. And that he was incapable of that. This is honesty. You understand? <laughs> this is honesty. <laughs> your, your sarcasm this morning is... No, it is not. It's <laughs> on a different, different level. <laughs> was so honest with us. <laughs> he, he didn't promise us anything. He said, rely on Baumia and he will deliver. That's why I brought him. That's why I brought him, because I cannot manage the economy. He but didn't add that. Those are your words. No, he did. He didn't add that. Randy, have you listened to Nanon Hinto, who was general secretary of yes. the new patriotic party mm. at the time Baumia was presented? Mm. He said, that's what they were told. Yes, the president himself said it. Yes. So the, the only thing is that he, he, didn't, he didn't say what you added. <laughs> that he can't do it. At least it's implied. Okay, yes. Okay. yes, yes. At least it's yes, implied. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. So, this is an honest man. He didn't deceive us at all. He was so honest. We didn't honest. catch the honesty. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's your headache. If you didn't catch the honesty, that's your headache. You understand? Right. Randy. But, but even for yes. some who caught the honesty, mm -hmm. they believed that he had found the whiskey. Mm -hmm. You understand? And, and perhaps, perhaps, just perhaps, mm. if they had read the thesis that Dr. Baumia presented for his doctorate, they may have hesitated mm. in buying into this honesty of the president. I've taken the trouble to read the thesis. Do you understand? Randy, I, I hope you've read the thesis mm. that he presented for his doctorate and so on. I haven't. Oh, I'll send you a copy. You know, I've mm. read it. Uh, when I read the thesis, <clears throat> I couldn't doubt, mm -hmm. you know, why we are in this mess. You understand? But be that as it may, mm -hmm. I mean, we are celebrating 40% inflation. What kind of country is this? We are celebrating the fact that now government bonds mean absolutely nothing. They have no value. We are celebrating it. <clears throat> so if you have leaders who celebrate indebtedness, who celebrate a certain level of debt forgiveness, who celebrate inflation when it reaches 40% and so on, what kind of future can this country have? 
And the two persons who spoke, <clears throat> Mr. Thompson and Mr. Tekwe, read what they said. They paint a very bleak future for 10 years, the next 10 years, what we are likely to suffer as a nation as a result of this this, 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 this contraption. I mean, we are being allowed to breathe a bit. Yeah, breathe a bit. Mm. You know, it's like, it's, 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 it's like, it's like causing, calling for, for, for a temporary ceasefire in Gaza. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know what that means? Temporary ceasefire in Gaza. Yeah, Stop the know. war, send them bread and, and, and petrol to run some generators and so on. And then after that, go and yeah. kill them again. Yeah. That's what we are facing. It's like the situation in Gaza. Yes, and the shock of it, and what shocks me, is that they are celebrating this. You've reached a, a deal with the IMF, okay? And that deal simply says that, look, freeze public sector employment. And the number one problem you have in your economy is unemployment. One of the key problems you have in your economy is unemployment. Please. Freeze public sector, you know, employment. And you are happy. And you are talking about development. You have entered a deal with the IMF, huh? in which they tell you that your educational policy needs to be reviewed. And this morning I'm reading the newspaper and I'm shocked. My own nephew, you know, Afeno Makin, I mean, found in the opposition that they're against the SHS and that they don't want a new bill passed in Parliament at all. Meanwhile, you have reached an agreement with the IMF to review the SHS program. Who are we fooling? Who are we deceiving? Randy, I, I am very worried about the future of Ghana. <coughs> Especially the we, we can future be, of Ghana. We can be fooling without intending to fool people. But Randy, you know, mm. Whoever wins the next election, mm. they should be careful. That's a big task. Now, they should stop making promises. They are coming to take over a bankrupt nation. That's what they are taking over. So they should stop making those lofty promises and so on. Because when they take power and they face the reality, they will smell pepper. Mm. Indeed, if the MPP should lose power now, it should That's be a blessing for them. They would That's escape. They would escape the Kenyan situation. It is those who are coming in who will face the reality of the bankruptcy mm. and so on. Mm. You understand? So those who want to come in, they, they should take their time. Of course, there are some of them who are completely loony. I'll tell you a story. I mean, yesterday I got to the office and there was a letter for me. And there are those letters, I read them. You know. So I opened this letter and read it. And it's from some guy who says that God has ordered him to be president of Ghana. Okay. And that uh, he is asking me to help raise funds for his presidential Ghana. I said, what kind of God do you worship? This God who decided that you should be president, president. of Ghana, he didn't give him the resources. God, God, and they are coming to God you. directed him to you. That God must be, must be wacky. <laughs> a God who directs a presidential candidate to me for financing is wacky. <laughs> so there are all these lunatic people, you know, who think that they can be president? So as for them, leave them. They, they, they are doing They don't know what they are doing. They don't, I mean, they don't take mental health uh, seriously in Ghana. Which I think we should begin yeah. to take mental health yeah, seriously in this country. Well, as for these lunatics, you can allow them. Yes. But the people who have their heads screwed on. We think so. No. Uh -huh. We think we need to be checking the screws. No. Randy, <laughs> it's not everybody who is trying to be president who is loony. <laughs> Hmm. I think some of them have their heads screwed on. You understand? Hmm. They should be careful what they say now. Okay. Because we we'll hold them to the promises that they are making today. Yes. Hmm. No matter who they are, hmm. we will hold them to the promises they are making today. Hmm.
And if they continue talking the way they are talking, they should be careful. Within the first 12 months, 24 months of the administration, they may have a Kenyan situation on their hands.